Let's talk about the millionaire tag. In my latest video, I had someone come up in the comments talking about, yeah, man, you make a lot of money, you're doing well, but the minute you have a prolonged health crisis, your channel is gonna die. Um, essentially, bro, that's already happened and the channel didn't die. And for those of you who are so deeply concerned about my pockets, based upon the performance of my company, I am indeed a millionaire. My asset, which I invest in, is my company. That actually counts. I know it ain't stocks, it ain't bonds, it's not cryptocurrency, but actually it counts. My net worth is 2.5 million. Now, here is my plan for all you punks, suckers, and distractors who are jealous of my success. I've been doing this 12 years, rather successfully, bruh. And you ain't even started your first business. You just up in the comics acting like a very feminine and moist man. But anyway, dispensing with that, I got a plan. And I wanna talk about my plan, because at first I was going to get into real estate because I was being seduced by the sexy, the hip, the popular. But I started doing some calculations and I want a lush retirement. I don't want like real estate, real estate compared to the cash flow that my business throws off, it, it, ain't, it ain't turning me on. It just ain't turning me on. So I'm sitting here thinking, what can I do? What can I create? So, you know, for this person who left this comment, well, man, your videos, you're gonna get prolonged, you know, literally praying that I get sick. That's so nasty. You should be ashamed of yourself. If your mama was around, she'd probably slap you because you disappointed her. But here's the thing. You can hate on me and you can hate on my success, but you see the Porsche, you see the titles, you see the house, you see the success. That can't be disputed as much as you hate it. Just hate it. Just, ooh, that Glendon Cameron, he makes me so angry. Ah. But anyway, so I got a five-year plan, an 11-year plan. And one of the things, and this would be a lesson for those of you who have businesses, focus on your business. This is why I'm not going off into cryptocurrency. This is why I'm not getting into stocks because I know from 20 years of experience that if I have a business that produces a product or service, it's gonna make me way more money than investments. Way more money. So my five-year plan is to systemize and process Savage Finance. Uh, my model is Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey is not doing anything new or innovative or sexy but he stuck with it long enough that he has a $55 million net worth based on the Ramsey show. And I've got books to write, I got people to hire. So that's gonna be the five-year plan because it's based upon my age. I'm 54 years old, right? So by the time I'm 59, I want to have a company, <clears throat> employees, programs, and stuff in place. And then my 11-year plan, now, this is about to pop your wigs for you low expectation having MFers. My income goal by the time I am 58 is 10 million a year. So I'm 54, so I'm giving myself four years to make, I actually, uh, my net worth, I actually was wrong about that. Because if I was to sell this company, 2.5, so my net worth is closer to 6 million but I digress. So I want to make 10 million. And why do I want to make 10 million? All right. I've watched all of these YouTube channels about investing and real estate and everything. And most of this information is for the common man. And that's why it doesn't resonate with me. I am not the common man. So my income target at 58 is 10 million. Now, at that point, I'm gonna, I already got the house, I got the cars, so all of that money is gonna go into an investment. Now, why 10 million? I invest 10 million, that should get me close to a million a year passive income. That's where I wanna be. 
here's the plan. I'm older. I'm probably going to marry me some young tender and have two or three more kids. So with that, me being an older gentleman and me making this promise and having these kids with this woman, I need to make sure that they're taken care of after I'm gone. So with this 10 million, I'm going to buy apartment complexes because uh, the last apartment complex I lived in, there was two of them. They sold for 40 million and the cash flow between both those properties was something like three to close to 400,000 per month. So if I could find, and go ahead and Google apartment buildings for sale. You're gonna find a whole bunch of low income or crazy stuff on LoopNet and everything, because I've been looking. But I wanna find a, a mid-level apartment complex. It, it doesn't have to be new but it want, I want it to be middle of the road. I don't want it to be on the low end. I don't want it way out in the country. So get that going where I can have a passive income of a million a year. That's the goal. And at that point, 58, I do 10 million, 59, I do 10 million, 60, I do 10 million. I'm just going to invest all that in apartment complexes. See all of you folks who are like, you ain't investing. Look, Brah, a Roth IA, a Roth IRA ain't gonna do jack for me. I, actually, I can't even qualify for one because I make too much. In a 401k, more garbage. And you know, essentially, I want to have a higher yield. And I know to get that higher yield, I gotta make more money so I have more money to invest. See, this is my plan for all of you people who worried about my pop. You ain't a millionaire, man. I don't care. I hate your Porsche driving it. Feminine, moist men. Because essentially that video had nothing to do with me being a millionaire. And investments. I've invested in a company. And let's go ahead and talk about that. I think that I have invested maybe over the years collectively maybe a hundred thousand in 12 years maybe and i made millions of dollars you cannot show me a stock or a cryptocurrency that will beat those yields from that level of investment so that's my plan and one of the things that you guys can learn from this is I'm focused. Like, a, you know, I kind of toyed with the Forex waters and stuff. And I was like, look, you, you got a chance to build something here. You got a chance to create something. So that's what I'm going to do. So that's my income target for the age 58. So I'm giving myself four years to get there. And once I hit that, and I buy that one apartment complex, that's way more passive income than 99.9% .9 of you ever gonna see. A mil a year passive income? Dude, we talking steak and lobster dinners. We're talking, I'm still driving the Porsche. I'm still living in this neighborhood. I'm still doing what I'm doing. Cause see, for you, average folks, you look at investments as, um, one of the things that kind of drives me crazy, <clears throat> which speaks to a scarcity mindset. Every dollar got to go somewhere and every dollar has to be invested. You want to know why? Because you don't have enough dollars. I could blow 200K on cars, get it back the next month. So I'm not like overly worried about every dollar got to be working because once again 20 years of experience i know that a business earns more than investments now i know that for many of you that's shocking because many of you don't are not financially literate if you come in on this youtube channel talking about you ain't a millionaire you know what you're not financially literate because like i said that thesis has already been tested in 2019 i didn't work for six months and my business kept making cash, kept throwing off cash. So 
the the goal is by 60 I want this to be what's called I call a perpetual business and I want it to you know I got books to write I got the, I got a lot of stuff to do but essentially I will have that 10 million or maybe 20 or 30 million invested in apartment complexes because if I get 30 million invested in apartment complexes we're looking at roughly 3 million a year passive income I can live well off that you know I can live very well off that and also having this company that I hire people put in place to run stuff while I'm like my boy Michael sitting at home like I got a friend and actually you're going to get to meet him because I'm going to do this serious real entrepreneurs real business uh, literally I've reached out to two people and they've said they're going to do it it's just a matter of scheduling but what I'm going to bring to you guys are some real entrepreneurs who don't have you know a vending machine business is cool an ATM machine business is cool I'm going to bring to you some stuff that y'all ain't never heard about because there's millions of businesses out there and I want to bring a different perspective of entrepreneurs and that entrepreneur journey because I'm going to be asking them when did you get started what was the hardest part about your business I got one guy who sells uh, metals to foreign countries uh, I got another guy who deals with lawsuits so I'm going to bring you a different perspective of business because like I said I've invested maybe maybe 100k in this business and it has made me millions maybe you cannot point to me a stock or a cryptocurrency that has beat my returns you can't and this is me this is my reality this is what I see this is so I'm not so quick to leave this to get on this quick trend and this may make me sound like an elitist mother I'm already rich you are trying to get rich I'm already there I want you to understand that I'm not in the same position as you and that's how a lot of you and a shout out to the, the folks who understand that I am the teacher. I am the mentor. I am your financial instructor. Shout out to those people. I appreciate you people and I'll see you in the corporate toolbox. But to all of you moist, feminine pocket watchers, you so busy watching my pocket, you don't even see the change leaking out your pocket because you looking at what I am doing kind of kill the case of the people who call me stupid for buying the Porsche. They can't buy a Porsche in cash. They can't do it. Even if they got together and put all the coins together, they couldn't do it. So instead of like, wow, he was able to pay money for a Porsche. They want to hate on it because they can't do it. And like I said, I hit my income target at age 58. I, I become a, a mini Grant Cardone. I become a force to be reckoned with because see that one acquisition of that $10 million for that one apartment complex. And I got to calculate the math on that. That right there will mean that I will be permanently wealthy, permanently wealthy. That's a concept that many of you don't understand because of your background. That's a, a something you don't understand because of your perspective of your environment. I've lived in this neighborhood for 12 years. When I go to the grocery store, I run past mansions. That is my reality. That is the normal. And for me, I want a lush retirement. I don't want to downgrade. Uh, that actually kind of scares me. I, I'm like, yeah, this is 5,000 square foot house. I live in it by myself. The next one is probably going to be 7,000 square feet. I become used to this. I become accustomed to it. What's my favorite saying? Luxuries once tasted become necessities. So this is where I'm going. For all you feminine, moist men who feel that your investments are going to outperform my company yields. Let me go see you buy a Porsche, bruh, with your, oh, that's right, you can't. Because I'm going to get more yields in a month than you're going to get in 10 years of investments. Yeah, good luck with that. So. 
One of the things that you're gonna see is a different level of content. You're gonna see me, because essentially, you know, this is a written plan. I got a five-year plan, I have 11-year plan. And once you have made seven figures in a year, do you understand how hard that is to do? And this is one of the reasons I have a little bit of tood. You need to respect the greatness. You know how hard it is to make seven figures in a year. Less than 2% of the country can do that. Less than 2% of the country can do that. And you, you, you want to sit here and say what I'm not because you don't understand. Just like those people over there who don't understand that a car can make you money. Um, you need to be financially literate and you need to be financially educated because if you understood what I have accomplished, what I have put together, you'd be like, you done well, bro, but you such a hater. You such a feminine, moist little man that all you can do is like, yeah, man, you got a Porsche. Yeah, man, you got a BMW. Yeah, man, you got that big house. But the minute you get sick, it's all, no, it ain't. That's already happened. I ain't lose nothing. Actually, I came back from that and made even more money. See, here's the thing. If you go ahead and put together a business and you build a team and you hire correctly, you can have that business for the rest of your life and not have to actually go to work. See, this is a concept that so many of you don't understand because there's like 30 million small businesses and like 90% of them are single, perfect, single people businesses, single person business. So I got to build out a team. I got to create a corporate culture. I, you know, I'm giving myself five years to do this. Not I'm going to try to do this in three months or a year. I'm actually looking at this is going to take some time, but at 58, if I make 10 million in one year, bruh, unleash the Kraken. I will be on here on YouTube talking so much junk. I will be because Essentially, I'm gonna probably make a promise not to show the corporate accounts until I get 10 million in there. And I'm gonna flash that, I'm gonna, log, I'm gonna do a, a video of me logging into my bank account, showing the 10 million large, and watch you haters just die. Just, just expire, just heads, boom, just blow up. Because so many of you don't have no dreams. So many of you have no goals. You just out here existing, moving from trendy thing to trendy thing to trendy thing versus staying focused on purpose and working hard. So that's my five-year plan. In my 11-year plan, I'll be 65 years old in 11 years. And that's gonna pass so much quicker. So at 65, it is my intention to have three or four apartment buildings, have this company running itself and at that point if i want to do this anymore i'll keep doing it if i don't want to do it anymore i will have the option not to do it because i will have three to four million coming in passively who knows i may take up gardening who knows i don't know what i'm gonna do but i know that i need to prepare and i know that i need to build and I want to get into a larger class of investments. Buying a house in Detroit, that works for many people. I think if that's something you wanna do and that makes you good money, fine. What I'm saying for me, it ain't enough money. I want my investments to create millions in passive income. I'm not looking for 2,000, 3,000, 4. I make, I make that in a day. That ain't, that ain't gonna do it for me. Luxuries, once tasted, become necessities. So this is where I part ways from the average person. I envision a lush retirement, the best medical care, the best of everything. 
And this is what I am forecasting for my future. Cause like I said, I'm probably gonna get me some young tender, wife her up and have two or three kids. And as a leader and provider, since I'm gonna die before they will, I mean, not trying to be gruesome, just to be facts. Cause even if I live to 90, um, that's still gonna be before they go. So I need to put some stuff in place that even when I'm gone, they're provided for. This is the template that I want to create. And I have a feeling, because I've had two health crises and neither one has taken me out. And I have a feeling I'm gonna be, I, I got a feeling that I'm gonna be like my Aunt Bunny. My Aunt Bunny, she's 107. I, I kind of have a feeling that I'm going to approach her level. I don't know why, because my mother died at 70, my grandmother died at 74, but I have a feeling I'm gonna be around a while. I just got a feeling I'm gonna be around a while. And part of that, because I was telling, um, a funny little story, the girl I'm dating, she didn't know how old I was. Uh, she is 32 and we were in bed and I was like, yeah, I'm 54. And she just slapped, she said, get out. How old? Stop lying. You don't look no 54. I am 54. Showed her my driver's license. And she was like, dang, you got some good genes. And I think part of that is for the last 12 years, and I've been doing this YouTube thing, my stress level has been super low. <laughs> I don't drive. Uh, I don't really do a lot of stressful things. And I think that's gonna contribute to the longevity because I got a purpose. I have a reason for being here. And my landlord who died at 101 and his wife was 24 years younger than he was. She died six months after he did because her purpose had left the planet. So I, I think I'm gonna be here a while. I think I am, just the feeling. So if I go ahead and marry this young tender tender, 55-ish, 56, we have two, three kids. And if I live to be 85, that means I will get to see my children grow up and become adults. And yeah, that, that's the plan. But I'm all about being a provider. And you know, it's funny, the other night I was on Clubhouse and it was this room blowing a bag for Valentine's, you know, and I said some stuff that no one really wanted to hear. Uh, I'll share what, what happened in that conversation with you guys. When I got married, we were struggling and I, I really counted on her paycheck and the marriage was hell. And the relationships that I've had since that, where I've been financially, you know, good, they've been better, they've been healthier, they've been rewarding. And I was saying, you know, if I don't want to do for you, if I don't want to spoil you, I don't want to date you. And that's what it is for me. If I'm dating you and I'm not caking you, that means I don't like you that much. I know that's crazy, but that's where I'm at. If you know, I don't want to do for you. I don't want to take care of you. I don't want to date you. And a lot of men, they were probably in their 20s to 30s. They weren't really feeling that man because, you know, part of the conversation was talking about, you know, paying for dates. I, I've been so beyond paying for dates. Like if you take a chick out three times and it costs you two or 300 bucks and you're crying over that, bruh, you ain't making enough money. Facts. That's why with disruptive mail, get your economy together, get your body together, get your mental together for date submissive women. So, you know, it's real interesting that how many men want to get a woman as a equal financial partner and don't understand how much that turns women off. It really does. But that's all I got. That's my plan for you. You ain't a millionaire, Glenda Cameron. I hate you. You're welcome. And good evening and good night. And if you want to be part of this plan, go below, get in the corporate toolbox, and we're going to do a lot of things together coming up. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next one.